Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the real nitty gritty Bible study hour, where we get down uh, to the to the crux, where we get down to the essence, where we get down uh, to the grit, uh, where we get down to where the rubber meets the road. In other words, we get down to the real nitty gritty. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Minister John C. Allen, and it's good to be once again among the land of the living. We thank God for you, and we just ask that you just sit back and prepare your hearts for this Bible study hour. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we give you all the glory, and we just ask right now to allow John Allen to decrease and allow us to rightly divide your word that we might be able to apply this word into our everyday walk. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name, and for his sake, let us all say, Amen. Listen, you out there who on Facebook, you out there uh, who on YouTube, uh, get ready for this Bible study lesson. Don't turn that, uh, that dial off or where you're at. We're going to be here for a little while. Uh, get your pencil, your paper together. Uh, we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, some things, be, may, some things uh, may be a little unusual to you, but this is why we call ourselves the real nitty gritty. So, but to, so therefore, just prepare yourselves uh, as we began to uh, uh, to dissect this particular word for tonight. Amen. Well, uh, need to go back for a moment and do a review of where we've been over the last. Uh, or uh, four Mondays. Uh, remember, uh, uh, we're going to go back to the to that first Monday, that first Monday evening where we uh, dissected the word. That was the night that we gave introduction to the actual Bible study itself. And in that Bible study, we gave a a a theme, and the theme was "Wake up, Rip Van American, American the greatest falling." Uh, and no man can save us but God. I'm going to say that again. The theme was wake up Rip Van American. American the great is falling and no man can save us but God. I'm going to say that one more time out there. Wake up Rip Van American. American the great is falling and no man can save us but God. And so we took that theme and we began to dissect that theme and broke it down into three increments on that night. Our first increment was Wake Up Rip Van American, where we began to discuss the relationship of Rip Van American. And I alluded that to uh, a, a story written by uh, Washington Irving, an author who wrote about uh, this character by the name of Rip Van Winkle. And it took place back around the Revolutionary War, and it, find, it comes out that uh, Rip Van Winkle had an argument with his wife, and he got mad and stormed out the door and found himself on the countryside of the Catskill Mountains. And in those Catskill Mountains, we find uh, Rip Van Winkle running into a group of, of dwarfs that was playing a game of nine pins. And not only were they playing a game of nine pins, but they were eating, drinking, and being merry, and Rip Van Winkle began to participate in that very thing. And before you know it, Rip Van Winkle had gotten drunk and fell into a deep stupor. And before you know it, he woke up 20 years later, had missed out on everything. Well, I alluded that to the fact of about our country, this great country of America, America that had its declaration of independence on July 4th, 1776, and we're a young nation, been around for 244 years, but in the midst of that, America has always appeared to be great on the inside, but something is wrong with America because America has a deep rooted problem that's been causing her slow demise or slow decline of her and that is America has a deep-rooted sin problem we may look good on the outside to everybody else but deep down inside those of us who live in America especially those of us who are minorities know that America isn't as great as people may assume that it is it has a sin problem well what is the sin brother brother teacher well I'm glad you asked that question because America has a sin problem it has the sin problem of arrogance a sin problem of vanity a sin problem of of grief of, of, of uh, uh, grief greed and a sin problem of uh, what we call selfishness and and supremacy and dominance and and a, and, and an issue of of, of, of uh, uh, will the willing intent to the willing uh, attempt intent to uh, 
uh, enslave a people. This is a deep-rooted sin that abides in the heart of America's and its, its uh, ancestral heritage, its founding fathers. It's deep-rooted. And the thing about it is America does not want to face that main truth, and that is of the hypocrisy of America. So we hide it. How do we hide it? We've hidden it for over 244 years that really the problem, there is no problem in America, but America has a deep rooted problem. And so we talked about that a little bit uh, uh, in that particular increment. And then we talked about the falling down of America. America the Great is falling. The America Great is falling. And it is be falling behind that particular sin. And the thing is that America does not want to face the reality or face the truth of the matter. And what is that? That America is a greedy nation. America is a sinful nation. America is an arrogant nation. America is a supremacy nation. America has a willing intent uh, to enslave others because it happened. How do I know that? Because it happened to our ancestors. And so we, and so tonight, and so that particular night we talked about that and talked about how on that night that America was falling. And then the third part of that increment of the theme we talked about, uh, we talked about that no one could save us from this fiasco but God. No man can save us. There is not a man on this continent that can save us from, from, uh, from the problems that we have in America. Uh, it can't be Biden. It can't be Trump. It can't be Martin Luther King. It can't be uh, the Congress. It can't be uh, the, the Senate. Nobody's going to save us but God. How? Because we have to recognize that our battle is not with flesh and blood. It's not with principalities. It's not with powers or rulers of the darkness of this world. It's not with spiritual wickedness in, in high places. Oh, come on, somebody. It is, is deep-rooted. It is embedded in the, in the, in the, it is embedded in these deep-rooted problems that America has. These are the problems where, where we have to deal with. The problems of dealing with this spiritual problem. And, and America does not want to, to uh, it, it, uh, handle that particular issue. And so we began to look at that, and we began to understand that America was falling because of that particular thing. And then we talked about uh, the third thing that we talked about of that increment. We talked about nobody, once again, nobody can save us but God. And that's the fact. Nobody can save us but God. God is the only one that can get us out of this stupor that we're in. And so we talked about that on the first night. And then the second, the second Monday we came back, we talked about five areas of concern that we were concerned about that uh, allowed, uh, that uh, is allowing America to crumble. And, and, and we know that there's five areas that we, we're going to talk about over the next uh, few weeks. We know that we're going to talk, one of the areas we're going to talk about is politics uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, and government. Uh, then we're going to talk about uh, uh, the economics, and then we're going to talk about socialization, and then we're going to talk about uh, 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 ethics and, morale and morals, and then we're going to talk about the last thing we're going to talk about is religion and, uh, and spirituality. And so these are the things that we broke down on that particular night, and we started off on that particular night with politics and we talked about government. And then the next Monday we came back and we talked about economics. And tonight we're gonna to talk about uh, socialization. I say that again, socialization. Well, what is socialization, uh, brother teacher? Well, we can define it like this. It is the process, watch this now, of learning how to be a productive member of society by accepting the beliefs and respecting the norms and values of others. I'm gonna say that again. Socialization is the process of learning how uh, to be a productive member of society by accepting this belief and respecting the norms and values of others. That's all it's about. It's about respecting the values and norms of others other than your own self. See, America has become very tribal over these 244 years. In other words, if, if white America says it's not right, then it's not right. And everybody else is wrong. 
And that, my brothers and sisters, is not well because they're not accepting the cultures and the mores and the values of other cultures other than theirs. Everybody else is treated in a secondary manner. Now, watch this now. I'm going to give you three quotes as we begin to get into this lesson for tonight. Three quotes, and then we'll get further into the lesson. The first quote is this. Frederick Douglass said, a chart is one thing, but the course of the vessel is another. For the Constitution may be right, but the government is wrong. I'm going to say that again. The government is wrong. Uh, quote number two, the, there, there are two Americas, one white and one of color. The whole Constitution applies to white America. But because black Americans were considered a three-fifth person, according to Article 1, Section 2, not a whole person in the sight of the founding fathers. They reconstructed the Constitution, how? By adopting three, I say three amendments, which is the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th Amendment. So, in, so when the founding fathers originally set this in order, they did not even consider black folks as even being a human person. We was three-fifths of a person. We wasn't even a whole person. And so therefore, um, and so therefore, I believe that becomes where the crux of the matter is, is that white America has never seen black America uh, as really as a whole person. And so they, we, we've always been considered beneath them. Now watch this and, 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 see, and see that's a dangerous situation when you begin to see somebody that you work alongside of, that you've been around for all these years, not as your equal. And, that's, and that, my brothers and sisters, is what's tearing down America when you can't see when you can't see white America, when you can't see the values and the norms of black America, when you can't understand and see the norms of red America, when you can't uh, understand and see the norms of brown and yellow America then, and red America, then that's what happens. Then you get division amongst us. And that's part of the crumbling process of what's going on in America. Listen, you who on YouTube, you out there who on Facebook, it's only, we're, we're all equal in the sight of God. We're all from the same family. There is no one family bigger than the other family. Case in point, let's look at this scripture for a second for tonight. And that scripture is Acts the 17th chapter, verse 26 and verse 27. I'll read it for you right now. That's Acts 17 chapter, verse 26 and verse 27. And it reads as, like, as this. From one man, he created all the nations throughout the whole earth. And then he says in verse 27, his purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way toward him that they might find him. In other words, my brothers and sisters, God has always wanted us to be a family. That's why God loved us so much. But understand he, he understand that we became one family because we were of one blood. We came out of one man, one individual, and his name was Adam. He had one man named Adam that he formed from the dust of the ground, and, and, and he noticed that and he noticed that there was and he noticed that Adam was lonely, and we know the history that how he took laid Adam down into a deep sleep from his side. We know that he took a rib, and from that rib he made woman, and Adam named that woman Eve, the mother of all living. Are you hearing me right now? And so we became one big family, y'all, because out of Adam came every single person. Uh, culture on the face of this earth. You say, well, we, we, and so what has happened is, and listen to me good, what has happened is Hollywood, media, educational institutions have, 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 have uh, played this down and made everything white. Are you hearing me right now? All the images have been made white. And unfortunately, uh, 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 white America, you need to understand this. Adam was not a white man. Understand that. He couldn't have been a white man because of the area that he formed and made Adam. Well, what do you mean, brother teacher? Well, we understand that uh, when God formed uh, uh, Adam from the dust of the ground, uh, he formed him in an area where the river Peon, Gihon, the Hideka, 
the Tigris and the Euphrates were flowing. Now understand that these rivers are located in a place called Africa. Now understand, he didn't form Adam out of the area where the Danube River was or the Volga River was, or, 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 you understand? Or, or, or he didn't form them out of the Rhine River with all these rivers in Europe, but we know that he formed uh, him from this dust, from this area, that area that where the Garden of Eden was formed. So in any kind of way, all I can say is that Adam had to be a man of color. And unfortunately, Hollywood and other media institutions and academic institutions, and even you, my white brother, uh, my ministers and teachers and shepherds and theologians, you have made everything European. And that, my brothers, is, is, has been a falsity or a lie over the years. And it has put down everybody else as though you are the supreme, uh, supreme culture. And that's a bad thing to be at when we're all of the same blood. For out of Adam came all the generations, and we were all the same blood. So don't ever think that there's one dominating blood, because there is not. There's only one blood, and it came out of Adam. For Adam, Adam produced a son by the name of Seth. Out of Seth produced a son by the name of Enosh. Enosh produced Canaan. Canaan produced Mahalia. Mahalia produced a son by the name of Jared. Jared produced a son by the name of Enoch who walked with God and was no more. Enoch produced a son by the name of Methuselah who lived some 969 years. And, and, out of, and out of him came a son by the name of Lamech. But they were all of one blood, Adam's blood. And we know that Lamech produced a son by the name of Noah. We know that Noah was the one that came before the flood that built the ark. And when the flood waters arose and rained for 40 days, the, it flooded the earth for 150 days. And when the ship came off, out and uh, landed on the place called Arafat, the mountains of Arafat, we find that there's nobody on the face of the earth but, but the one called Noah and his family, and they were all of the same blood. And out of there came Ham, Shem, and Japheth. They were all of the same blood. Uh, that's therefore, when the earth was repopulated, it was repopulated with Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Now understand, there is no, there was no dominating, no dominating person. Ham was no stronger than, than Shem, and Shem was no stronger than Japheth. So my brothers and sisters, always remember, we're all family. We're all of one blood that goes all the way down to the blood of Jesus who died on the cross for your sins and my sins because Jesus came from the blood of Adam through the, through the, through the, uh, through the order of Seth all the way down to the generations. Are you hearing me right now, uh, class? Understand and mark that down. There's only been one blood, and that blood was shed on Calvary for everybody's sin. That's why they sung that song, Jesus Loves the Little Children, All the Children of the World, Red, Yellow, Black, and White. They're all precious in God's sight. It was all behind one blood and one blood only. And my brothers and sisters, that is the real nitty-gritty. Well, Let's look at, let's look at uh, this particular scripture. Are you with me right now? Understand, we're all one blood. Well, the Bible says in the book of Mark, the gospel, Jesus says, love your neighbor, watch this, as yourself. And that's all we've been trying to do is love one another. It's amazing to me why we keep loving this country and this country does not love us back. Love your neighbor as yourself. And if we can begin to do that, and I say that to America, mainstream America, that's all we've ever wanted to be was respected. That's all we've ever wanted to do is love one another. And God has sent this down, this edict down that we're to love each other. Ah, uh, as our neighbors. Are oh, you hearing me right now? There's a, there's a time period that, that, uh, that, uh, 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 that I want you to understand that all during the times we've come from slavery all the way up to now, 
We've tried wholeheartedly as a people, as a black culture, to try to blend in and integrate with America. But America has never accepted us. We've always tried to, to love America. Are you hearing me right now? Uh, we've always tried to love. We, 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 we would move into your neighborhoods and, and, and the next thing you know, you would move out. Uh, uh, we always tried to love America. We wanted our kids to play with your kids. We wanted our kids to go to school with your kids, but sooner or later you would move out and start your new schools. We wanted our kids to play peewee football and, and baseball with your kids, uh, but sooner or later you take your children out and start new programs. We've always tried to integrate with you all, but you've never really accepted us. You've sound, it's so that you've never really respected us. And that's just not black America, that's what all minorities. Understand, my brothers and sisters in mainstream America, we love you, but why is it that you don't love us? Now watch this, because uh, uh, th there are some things that goes on that you need to understand that we've been like this ever since we came into America. Understand, you came into America, uh, uh, you came into America w wanting to come into America. Your four parents came on ships to Ellis Island. Your, 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 your families came here and, 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 and you waving your flags from Italy and Germany and, 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 and all across the world. Y'all came into America and y'all began to believe the words uh, uh, that was, that was spoken of uh, by the lady by the name of Emma Lazarus. You know what she said, give me your tired, your, 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 your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free. And you came in happily and lovingly and really realizing that there was a future for you in America. Unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, we didn't come into America like that. My ancestors didn't make it in like that. There's a whole different look as we came in. We came in in chains. We came in on ships. As a matter of fact, y'all tell me one day when you search the scriptures one day in Deuteronomy 28 chapter verse 68, I still been trying to figure out who are they talking about on Deuteronomy 28? What people was going to come into Egypt again on ships as slaves? What ship, what, what, what group of people is that going to be? And I searched around. I didn't find any Aryan people. I didn't find any German people. I didn't find uh, any, any, uh, uh, any Italian people coming in ships as slaves into America. The only ones that I've seen come into this place were my ancestors, the people of the African trade trade. Are you hearing me right now? But not only that, but God even speaks to us in Deuteronomy 28, chapter 44, when he says the foreigners who among you will climb the ladder higher and higher. While you go deeper and deeper into the hole, he'll lend to you, but you won't lend to him. He'll be your head and you'll be the tail. In other words, this is a characteristic of the persons that would be over us. And that's the way it's been in America. We've been in America, my ancestors, some 400 years, and it seems like whatever group of minority of people that comes into America, they all rise above us or over us. And we, and we become the, instead of us becoming those that are the lender, we become those that become the ones that receive the, the, receive the money. Understand that, we, that we don't, we're not the head, but we become the tail. Understand these are the characteristics of a group of people that came over here, not because they wanted to, but because they were placed here unwillingly and unwantedly. That's why the Bible, that's why, uh, let me give you this quote, uh, family. Uh, the, the quote is from MLK Jr. And he said this, he said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And, and, G, and John spoke in 1 John 4, verse 20 and 21. Listen to what John said. He says, if anyone boasts, I love God and goes right on hating his brother or sister. Think of it. He is a liar. If he won't love the person he can see, how can he love the God he cannot see? The command we have from God, the command we have from, of Christ is blunt. Loving God includes loving people. You've got to love both. And I say to America, until you began to love your brother, until you began to love your sister that is different from you, 
we'll never be the people that we're supposed to be. And that's what's causing the decay. And that's what's causing the fall of America. The socialization that we've placed here tonight is the fact that we can't hang together, not because, we, not because we're on the same level, but because of the attitude of who you are and thinking that you are better than someone else. My brothers and my sisters, understand this. Understand this. America the Great is falling, and no man can save us but God. We'll see you next week.